ring cleared to make way for the heavyweight fight. So, just to continue to entertain you, let's take a look back at how Moskayev got hold of this belt. It was August of 2006, and he was a huge underdog against Hasim Rachman in Las Vegas. In fact, Moskayev had struggled so much since his first knockout of Rachman back in 1999 that a lot of people thought he didn't have any chance in the fight. But then in the 12th round, Moskayev began to rake Rachman over the coals, and this really followed round after round of tactical superiority by Moskayev. You know, Moskayev has made a career of being brought in as the underdog only to outbox with his superior counterpunching skills the favored fighter. He did it twice to Rachman, he's done it to many others. But in the past when Moskayev has reached this position where a win would really put him over the top, he's come up short. Here he is against Sam Peter, a murderous puncher, but a relatively crude, aggressive brawler. He has a golden opportunity tonight, uh, and um, you know it's up to him to take advantage of this right yeah, now. Yeah, and, and, and some people discount him again because he's 39 years old, and because if you look back at the relatively distant past, you find five knockout losses for Moskayev, which suggests, okay, he's got a fragile chin, he's going against Peter, a big puncher, younger, stronger, faster, hungrier, etc. open and shut. Which one is the real Oleg Moskayev, though? The guy who's won 12 straight now with nine knockouts, or that other guy who used to get knocked out by lesser people? I would say the guy who's won the fights recently. You know, he went through a bad slump period. I think he lost three fights in a row by knockouts. And I was fortunate to be in the gym at the time that when I was training in New York, and he spread with my cruiserweight champion, uh, NABO champion, Jonathan Banks. And we talked afterwards, and he was just saying he was just in a slump right there. He didn't look that good. But later on, he said he's got himself back together. He's had a great job with his new trainer that he's been working with now, and he just feels that he's on a roll right now. So, if you're looking for the possibility of Moskayev scoring a knockout upset, one thing that might encourage you there is that Samuel Peter, once regarded as having a spectacular chin, was down three times in his last fight against Jamil McCline in Madison Square Garden. Let's go back to October of last year, round two, and suddenly Peter, who had never been down, gets caught with a little uppercut right there. But you see, that was more, he was off balance and a lack, lack of experience. Jamil McClan knocks a lot of guys down because he has a lot of weight on his sides and he pushes his punches. That's why he doesn't knock too many people off. But that but second by the knockdown was a real knockdown. Oh yeah, that was definitely a real knockdown. But by the same token, even though we consider Sam Peter a big puncher, he really doesn't land many punches on the chin. Most of his punches land on the back of the head. I clubbed them outside of the Jeremy Williams. He doesn't hit people on the chin that much. He hits them all on the outside. And if he hits anybody on the chin properly, he really would hurt them. And Peter's supporters love to point out that while waiting 16 months, as he says he did, to, to fight Moskayev for this title, he actually improved his boxing skills demonstrably, particularly in his second fight with James Tony, where he was doubling and tripling the jab, moving better on his feet, and won the fight clearly. Now here's the tale of the tape. You see the 12-year age advantage for Peter. We've already seen one fighter with a 12-year age advantage lose tonight. A one-inch height advantage for Moskayev. An arm length equality, 24 and a half inches each, measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Peter weighed in over 250 pounds. Moskayev is also a very big man at 243. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Oleg Moskayev Samuel Peter fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the rules of the World Boxing Council. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. Case of caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the score cuts at the start of the fifth round, and you cannot be said by the bell of any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Samuel Peter grew up in abject poverty in Nigeria. When he first started boxing, he says that he would train barefoot, that he never had a heavy bag or a speed bag to hit, but rather would polish his punching technique against hanging tires. It's not the ideal origin for making it to the heavyweight championship level. By the way, he fights like it. He fights in a, in a uh, uh, not the most polished style, but he is so big and strong. As Emmanuel says, he doesn't even really have to hit you cleanly to have the, for the, the blow land with real force. But also I think that Jim, his first really big time fight was when he fought with Vladimir Klitschko. 
And, you know, from that fight, I saw he struggled his last three fights, but I think he's really developed into a serious fighter now. He's, that was his introduction to what we call the big time league. Up until then, he was fighting class B guys. He just clubbed and knocked around. But since then, he's been struggling, but I think he's gotten a better attitude about everything in boxing now, and is a much better fighter. You need only look at that neck, 19 and a half inches in circumference, to see why he is regarded as a guy who can take a punch. The three knockdowns against McCline, notwithstanding. And now here comes Oleg Moskayev to the strains of another one bites the dust. And you know, the sombrero is quite a ploy. We've seen uh, recently on HBO, Carlos Quintana upset Paul Williams, a guy with a good amateur background, take on a kind of physical phenomenon and expose him. Oleg Moskayev has a good amateur background. And although it's technical early in fights, he generally finishes with knockouts. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Included in that amateur background was a first round stoppage of Vitali Klitschko, which yeah. he accomplished with hand speed. Well, he said that by his own admission, he said as soon as the, his, Klitschko's trainer jumped in the ring and stopped it because Klitschko had a, Vitali had an injury and the trainer was worried about the injury reoccurring. Even back then he had injuries. So, but nevertheless, he had a solid amateur background and that's what's really current. A lot of these, as we call Russian champions, they have solid backgrounds. Samuel Peter, total of 20 amateur fights, even in himself. Jamil McLean, almost no amateur fights. And we look at Hossein Rockman. So it's a lot, not just the system, it's just that they have better amateur backgrounds where our fighters don't have them. Moskayev is managed, you might have seen there in the picture briefly by Dennis Rappaport, whom you'll remember 20 years ago or 30 years ago from his association with Jerry Cooney. And one final point before we go to the ring. We always this focus on the Eastern European night origins night of fighters like Moskayev and Vladimir Klitschko. They live in the United States. They live here full time. They function as Americans. Let's go to the ring announcer for the official introduction. And supervisor of this fight to 12 rounds, Rex Walker. El presidente del Consejo Mundial de Boxeo, Jose Sulaiman. El supervisor de la pelea, Rex Walker. Una producción de Don King Productions in association with Duba Boxing and Pepe Gomez Promotion. Presenting. Los jueces para esta pelea, the judges for this fight. Herminio Cuevas from Mexico. Ken Morita from Japan. Daniel Van de Wiel from Belgium. El referí de México, Guadalupe García. El doctor de ring, José Luis Sibarra y Víctor Aguilar. A 12 rounds, por primera vez en la historia, en territorio mexicano. 12 rounds for the first time in Mexico to unify the heavyweight title of the World Boxing Council. Para unificar el campeonato pesado completo del Consejo Mundial de Boxeo. En la esquina roja. In the red corner. Con 250 libras, tres cuartos. 250 pounds, three quarters. 29 peleas ganadas, una perdida, 22 knockouts. 21 wins, one loss. 22 KOs, originally from Nigeria, originario de Nigeria, residing in Las Vegas, Nevada, the WBC Interim World Champion, Samuel the Nigeria Nightmare Peter. Y en la esquina azul, and in the blue corner. 243 libras, 240 pounds. 34 wins, 5 losses, 26 knockouts. Residing in West Sacramento, California. Fighting for Russia. The WBC champion. The champion of the world. Oleg Moscow. Hey!
¿Y las instrucciones? ¿No voy a dar instrucciones? Por favor, lectura de las instrucciones. Por instrucciones. Ok, lady man. I already give you the instruction in the dressing room. Good luck. I want a clean fight. Remember, this is the line where the low blows are legal. Ok? Check the gloves and go to your corner. Good luck. If you watched the lightweight title fight between Diaz and Campbell, you saw why you love the lightweights. Both these guys are big punchers, and if one of them lands, you're going to see why you like the heavyweights. Well, already in the first heavyweight matchup of the evening, North Carolina has beaten Duke and Durham. Now on to the next heavyweight fight. <laughs> And I've seen that referee before, Emmanuel Stewart. He's the guy who stopped the fight between Oliver McCall and Lennox Lewis in London in 1993. <laughs> A stoppage with which Lennox doesn't really argue now, incidentally, which means that 15 years have gone by. They walk to each other, and it begins. Two very big men who can punch. Peter Range finding with the jab. Moskayev staying at range. From listening to the instructions coming from the corner of Samuel Peter, which is basically from Stacey McKinney and Pops, as we call him, Sam Anderson. They are very concerned about Moscow's right hand. That's why they tell him, Sam, to keep his left hand up. Well, if you saw Moscow knock Hasim Rahman through the ropes with a right hand in Atlantic City in 1999, as many of our viewers did, you understand why you worry about it, but he was tremendously effective against Hasim Rahman with a little left hook. One thing I've noticed about Moscow, if he finds a weakness in your arsenal early on, if he finds a hole where he can work in your defense, he will go to it again and again and again. See the pace here, so much different from the lightweight fight we just saw. But the drama, the tension is higher because the fight can end at any moment the way these guys punch. Neither man has really tried a power shot yet. Sam Peter reaches out with the right hand to go to the body, reaches with the left hand to go to the body. Moskayev still just focusing upstairs. Every time Sam starts making an aggressive motion, Moscow starts backing away, trying to keep space, trying to keep distance where he can place his shots and get in and out. We know that Moskayev has been told to be cautious about Peter's power in the first three or four rounds and then to begin stepping up the intensity moment by moment. Peter has produced some picture book knockouts like his left hook beheading of Jeremy Williams. As has Muskayev, like his knocking Rachman through the ropes. Yep. Hard right hand by Peter, and he follows it with another right hand. Peter, look, Sam looks very relaxed. He seems that as a, I'm very impressed with the right hand, because most of his shot used to be club and punches, but he's shooting more straight up punches now, but can never relax too much with Moscow. He's a cagey old guy, and he's always looking for that one shot. Peter also produces a little left hook off the jab, and now Moskayev swings his first two power shots. And there's that punch to the back of the head, which Moskayev's people have spent weeks complaining about and suggesting that Peter must be watched. And the end of round one. A good round, Samuel. But the thing is, you got to just double jab and take a step in, take a step in. But he's throwing right hands at you, so make sure you keep ducking under. Keep ducking under, rolling under, rolling under. Then all you get your rhythm going, then you're going to come with combination. Come on, get your legs out.
listen. When he throws those jabs, you make a miss, throw two and three jabs. You gotta beat him to that jab. Watch when he hyperextends. You gotta, you gotta count him right away with the jab. Or he may aim all your punches towards the heart. All right, and and, and let go. This guy, don't give him that respect, bro. Don't give him that respect. CompuBox numbers in a relatively sparse round one. Moscow have five out of 32, Peter 14 out of 51. Those two right hands over the top surely won the round, in my view, for Sam Peter. And now they go to the second. You know, the right hands that Moscow threw, I was not that impressed with. He seemed like he was kind of clubbing them, throwing them. He had to wide arch in his right hand tonight, and, you know, and it looked a little bit slow. Moskayev looks far yeah, more looks apprehensive against Peter than was the case against Rachman back in August of 06. Of course, Moskayev's only had one fight in those 16 months, and that's one possible deficit for him is ring rust in the fight. To make up for it, his manager, Dennis Rappaport, says that he sparred 170 rounds in training. That's a lot. That's a lot of sparring. But, you know, when this fight was first made mention originally, Everybody, particularly Vladimir and I, we thought it was going to be a mismatch. Sam Peter's going to destroy Moscow. And it's it, now that the fight, fight took place, more people are giving Moscow a better chance simply because of Sam not looking too impressive in the, the three fights fight. that he had. Yeah, the two fights with uh, James Tony and the fight with Jimmy McClain. So without doing anything, Moscow's odds seem to improve with the public a lot more. And now Moscow is getting much more active in round two after having laid back through most of round one. Moskayev is 39 years old. And uh, Teeter fought a total of 36 rounds against Vladimir Klitschko and James Tony. That's like getting a PhD in heavyweight boxing. It was not evident in Peter's performance against McCline. But here, Emmanuel, I think you're seeing some improvements. Yes? That's what I said. I think he's now, even though he didn't look at him impressive in those fights, I think beginning with Latimer, he really changed and became a Class A fighter. And you can see the improvement now. On the other hand, Moskayev has found a couple of answers in round two. A little while ago, you saw him counter over a right hand with a quick left hook that landed flush. That left hook was tremendously important against Rachman in setting him up for the 12th round knockout. He, even in some of Moskayev's best wins of his career, he hasn't started fast. Um, he is technical. He studies his opponent. And as you mentioned earlier, Jim, he exploits weaknesses as the fight progresses. Great, great job, Maskaev originally lived in Staten Island. Recently, he's been making a family move to Sacramento, California. He was very enthusiastic about moving to Sacramento back in 2006 because he was going to set up a real estate investment business. It wasn't exactly the perfect moment in time for setting up a real estate investment business, so he slowed down on that plan for the moment. Peter backs Moskayev up with a big left hand. Tries to go to the body with his right. Peter is getting closer, closer as the fight goes on this round here. He's getting a little better range than that than he had before. Moskayev chopping over the top with the right hand. But it's a slow, slow chopping right hand. There's no speed to it. Okay, we're going to have to come off your flat feet. That's what's going to The Tennessee Volunteers, have long been a basketball powerhouse in the women's game, now behind colorful coach Bruce Pearl. The men's program was briefly atop the rankings. Find out what's behind Pearl's success on the next Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel, premiering Monday night, March 10. And March 22, Boxing After Dark returns with lightweight titleist Joel Casamayor taking on Michael Katsidis. Get those jabs going. Two and three jabs, don't wait. Don't wait, Oleg. Don't wait. Give him some water. Take a deep breath. You got about 30 seconds. There you go. All right, let's get the chair. CompuBox numbers in the second round totally evened up. Moskai have 15 out of 48, including 10 out of 34 jabs. Peter, 14 out of 48, including 7 out of 31 jabs. And we go to round three. Stop, stop, stop. The punch, the punch, the fight. Little jab lands for Peter. 
Moskayev misses with the left hook, and once again, Peter hits Moskayev on the back of the head with the right hand. But what, what's interesting, when Peter avoids the punches of, of Moskayev, he seems to do it so relaxed, which is interesting, because he's never been known for that, but his defensive skills have improved a lot. His upper body movement and everything, and, and he's totally relaxed in there. And his jab works better than Moskayev when he throws it. I gotta say, guys, since late in the last round, I think, Moskayev's made some adjustments, and I see him um, fighting much better over the, the last maybe minute of the last round and so far this round. Well, Harold Letterman gave him the second round. Twice in this round now, he's been hit on the back of the head. What about this Sam Peter thing of hitting people in the back of the head, Vladimir? It was important in producing the three, or uh, Emmanuel, it was important in producing the three knockdowns of Vladimir Klitschko in Atlantic City. Well, that was really a part of his style at the beginning, but I don't think that's the case anymore. He catches Moskayev and wobbles him with the right hand there. Moskayev's badly hurt. And now Peter is just unloading in the corner. Moskayev not firing back, but blocking most of the shots. He blocked oh. almost all those punches with his yeah, gloves. It's, it's now let's see if he has any legs. Sam need to just take his time. He'll catch him again with the same punch, but he's... Don't burn yourself out. Peter's jab is impressive here. Now Moskayev's got his legs back, and he rocks Peter with the left hook. And now it's Peter who's on the defensive. This is turning out to be almost like a real heavyweight brawl. Not too many Chris Sharp movements are punches. Peter had Moskayev hurt a minute into the round. And a minute, 15 seconds later, Moskayev hurt Peter with a left hook. You know, that's because when they exchange, Emmanuel, even though Peter's younger and at this point has more athletic than Moskayev, right Moskayev's punches are shorter. It's much more experience, too. You know, the experience from the amateurs, I mean, he did a lot of things off of instinct. What a where, comeback where in this Peter round went, where, where by Peter Oleg Peter's inexperienced, so when he gets tired, he's tired. When a guy with experience a mouth, he could be tired, but that other experienced person keeps fighting for him. And that's what looks like is happening in this fight now. Both men walk very slowly to their corners after a tumultuous round three. Don't get three. careless. Don't get careless. Shut your legs up. When he's throwing punches, you gotta go in a circle. Can't stand in front of there. This guy can't take a punch ball. You gotta go to the body. Put some water, bro. Come on. I'm gonna win. Bang and trying to trade this round, all right? There you go. You need to box through this round, all right? Let's give you one round to recover and everything, okay? Do what we tell you to do. Okay? And listen, counter the right hand. Counter the right hand. Because he's throwing him at him. Here we see Sam Peter land the right hand. It wasn't so much of a, a, a clean shot, but it caught right on the side of the head where most of his power punches come from. And Moscow at this time is getting away. Didn't get hit with anything clean after that. And here we see coming back, Moskov come back with his exchange, and he lands a grazing left hook, I think, that caught Peter. But none of them were really clean direct punches on the chin. But oftentimes in this division, you'll see guys badly hurt on punches to the temple or the top of the head or behind the ear. Nine of Moskov's 16 connects in that round were in the last minute. Relatively even copy box numbers. Harold, how do you have it through three? Look at him. Two runs to one, 29. 28, Samuel Peter. I, I gave him rounds one and three. Jim, I, I thought you had to give him the third round based on that huge flurry in the middle of the round. But, you know, all of Biscayev certainly came back at the end of the round. Jim, I got to tell you one thing. You mentioned Lupe Garcia stopping Lennox Lewis's fight in London. The judge in this fight, Daniel Vanderbilt, stopped Lennox Lewis's fight in Johannesburg. Well, and somewhere Lennox is watching. <laughs> and laughing. At this point, he can. He's Lennox thinking. Lewis is in the rare position of getting better every day. He, he's thinking to himself at this point, up, oh, or oh, hold that thought. He's thinking to himself at this point, I lost two fights in my career. They're talking about both of them. <laughs> but, yeah, but he did knock out both guys in return yeah. matches, too. Viciously. Yeah. Well, and just to quote it again. Stop. A distinction that Lennox holds along with only Rocky Marciano. The only two heavyweight champions who have defeated every man with whom they were ever in the ring. Gene 
Honey. Lost to Harry Greb, avenged the loss. Later won the heavyweight championship. Unless I'm missing someone, I guess he's the third. All right, I'll have to accept it. Well done, Max. <laughs> That's the third. Still a very small group. Small fraternity. A slow paced puncher's slow delight. Approach, yeah, and I'm looking at uh, Sam is starting to throw his wide right hands again. And going down the stretch, he better watch because Mosca's eyes seem to be more alert. And I'm looking at the experience in, in his eyes. I see a lot of experience in Mosca's eyes starting to show as the fight goes on. In recent years, you'll recall that there's one governing body which has adopted open scoring for title fights. And this is it. So at the end of this round, the judges' scores are going to be announced to the audience. If you listen up, you'll hear how the judges have scored the fight to this point. Listen up. Listen up. Sammy, you're not using the jab enough, okay? You're waiting too long. You're waiting too long. If you get the jab working, you're going to have no problem with this guy, okay? Deep breath and let it out slow. You're giving the guy a chance because you're not jabbing enough. You're in dog shape, okay? Stop worrying about time. What you go with hook, you gotta come with the right hand. Hook and right hand. Let's go. You're gonna beat this guy, bro. You're gonna beat him. This guy's soft in the body, bro. You gotta be alive. Don't stay in front of the man. You stay in front, you're looking for, you're, looking, you're gonna be a victim there. Side to side, break rhythm. Let's go. Well, we did not hear the scores, and that may have something to do with the relatively inexperienced local ring announcer, but one way or another, the predicted open scoring fiasco. Oh, now they're gonna hear, uh, announce it. Judge A, 37-39, Peter. Judge B, 37-39, Peter. Judge C, 38-40, Peter. So the third judge must have scored two even rounds. Peter lands a good right hand and a stiff left jab. Moskayev comes back with a one, two, three, takes the right hand for his trouble. You know, the way these guys are winging shots, anything can happen here. But as Emmanuel said earlier, Moskayev's muscle memory is more correct and he throws shorter punches in exchanges and that probably tips the scales in his favor in those exchanges. But, but Peter has a little bit better coordination upper body movement. Just a little bit more. Harold, uh, even though Sam Peter had a very slow round four, landing only five out of 21 punches, all three judges have Peter ahead by two points. What do you make of that? What you, I tell you the truth, I got it the same way. I have 39, 37, Samuel Peter, so I can't really argue with him. The one that, the one that bothers me, though, is that 40 to 38. I mean, certainly I thought Mishkai had clearly won the second round. They, they scored two rounds even in this fight. I mean, I, I think a judge could have picked the winner. As you mentioned, Jim, given the inexperience of the ring announcer, it's possible that the scores have been mistabulated it's also or misled. Yeah. That's quite possible. That's a good point, Max. Under any circumstances, I'll stick with my personal opinion that open scoring is a dreadful idea, which does way more to sap the fight of its competitive suspense than to provide that element of integrity that the audience is supposedly a, going to get It's from. a terrible idea in practice, if not in theory. Hard right hand by Moskayev, and Peter returns with one of his own. But Oleg keeps firing up the middle, and that may ultimately make a difference. Yeah. Peter is returning counter punches. Whenever he gets hit, he returns a punch back automatically. But, you know, I'm just looking at Moskov's eyes. He still seems to be studying him and trying to analyze it. He's trying to land one big clean punch, and it very well could happen because Peter's face is so flat-footed. And as the fight goes on, I think he's going to get sloppy. 
And one more thing about those scores. Oleg Moskayev has a lawsuit now against the governing body, which is sanctioning the butt. What? This shot. Tremendous shot taken by Peter, and he came right back. That means a lot to, in terms of this, this actually destroying the confidence of a guy like Moscow. Those are the shots that Moscow normally knocks people out with. More on the lawsuit in round six. Oleg, when you put your combinations, you can't uh, leave a spacing. I told you about that. All right, come on. They got you losing this fight, so you got to stop. You got to stop moving in our body. You got to start moving. Now you got to start throwing punches and let go to the body. I've been begging you to go smart with the left hand, okay? Now listen, they just said that you were winning by two points. Now he heard it. Don't let this guy out box you, Samuel. Hustle up, hustle up. And get a little rhythm going up in your upper body, man, so you can go. Hey, here you see the right hand that came in by Moscow. Couldn't have been a better punch zone. And Peter took the punch, and they actually came right back shortly after that and landed punches of his own. CompuBox numbers in the fifth round. Moskav landed 12 out of 28 jabs. Peter one out of 13. You saw the power shots for Moskav. How could you not give him the round? But, as I mentioned, Moskav and his contingent have a lawsuit now against the governing body which sanctions the fight. So you might reasonably ask, how could he win a decision under these circumstances? And you might reasonably answer, he couldn't. <laughs> Not to mention that we are in the country which is the headquarters of that governing body. And Peter's promoter is known to have an extremely friendly relationship with it. It would be nice if it went the distance and Muskayev deserved to win that he did get the decision. Uh, it would be even nicer if we had a conclusive concussive ending here. The way they're winning shots, it looks like a conclusive ending is likely. Yeah. Hard to imagine them going the distance, firing power shots like this, except, of course, that the pace remains so slow. Good body shot by Peter. And Nostayev once again makes clear to the, the referee that Peter's hitting him on the back of the head. And now referee Lupe Garcia warns Peter, but does not take a point. Manuel. And I don't know about you, Emmanuel, I think it is still very big in his arsenal to hit people in the back of the yeah, head. I don't really, you can't say that was a rabbit right, punch. Right. It was just the way that Moscow was bending his head down to it. It was, a part of it, was, it was not enough where the referee could really take a point away. Also, even though Peter is not tall, he has long arms. And I think sometimes the way he wings these punches with his long arms, they wind up in the back of the head, whether or not it's intentional. Yes, if he launches one of those looping overhand rights too late, while the fighter has already moved forward, that's where the that, glove is going to go. That was the same thing there, but they're overhand rights a lot. But, you know, it's different when you get in a clinch and you, you, then you re purposely reach the guy in the back of the head. But the punches that just come from the round and a little bit much, you can't, can't control that. Crowd thought that Peter had been hurt by the left hook. In fact, he was just off balance. Right. Right. It seems as, 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 as the fatigue sets in, the, the fight's going to favor Moscow, as I said, because his experience will make him able to think better under in an exhausted situation as compared to Peter. Hard right hand by as Peter. He, and he's hurt. Knocks Moskayev back. Moskayev goes right back into the ringer, and now he is momentarily out on his feet. And Sam takes his time to place his punches. Peter lands on the back of the head twice more. Moskayev tries to show the referee. Hard shot to the face. He's fighting a very smart this time. He's not just throwing a lot of punches. He's placing every one of his punches. Amazing that it's Moskayev over. is still up. It's over. It's over. And that's, Garcia stops it. That's the kind of knockout we were looking for. There is a guy with a mandate to fight Vladimir Klitschko now. I agree. That was the result that the division needed to settle the question of where to go next. That's a real heavyweight knockout. I mean, and he placed, I like the fact that when he had him hurt, he didn't get excited this time. He placed every punch. Yeah, that was a clinical every finish. every punch, yes. Very, very good professional finish. Almost Kelly Pavlik-like. Peter closed the show landing 25 out of 35 power shots. An excellent sixth round TKO 
for Samuel Peter against a smart, experienced, good technical fighter in Oleg Moskow. You know what? He is the first Nigerian heavyweight champion. We've got a lot of good heavyweight contenders and challenges, but he's the first He's the first one. Nigerian heavyweight titleist. Yeah, champion. Titleist? Titleist is what I would say. You can <laughs> say champion if you want to. Yeah, oh, yeah, heavyweight. Okay, heavyweight this heavyweight. is a yeah. distinction but, that, you know, but, to uh, be the champion is when, when we have one guy who we who we are sure is the dominant fighter but, in the division. Believe me, down in Nigeria, they're going to take it the other way. I mean, <laughs> he's the heavyweight. The first champion. Nigerian <laughs> fighter with a heavyweight belt, and yeah. I think it's, it's great for the continent of Africa. Yeah. Here's the punch that first hurt Moskaya. Oh, my, that was definitely nothing clubbing about that on the back of the head. That was a good, clean blow right there. But what was more impressive was the way he followed up after that. And now here's the end of the fight. And this is where Peter finishes with a series of strong blows yeah, on act. the face. None of those punches landed on the back of the head. Nope. Most of them landed on the face or the chin. And the stoppage was well-deserved, though it came with seconds remaining in the round. Yeah, yeah, but still, he was just clean, accurate blows, and nothing hardly missed. Every punch was effective. So we don't have to worry about the judges. Don't have to worry about influence. Samuel Peter made it unequivocal. And now the Nigerian nightmare steps forward to stake his claim as the man you must fight to prove yourself as the leader of the division. And, and you know what was impressive, too, was the fact that he showed that he could take a good punch when he got hit solid on the chin. Never did he waver. And they showed great coordination when he was slipping and sliding. A lot of things that he didn't do when he first fought with Latimer. He would just walk straight in. Now, just in case you don't remember, the fight was two and a half years ago in Atlantic City. Samuel Peter fought Vladimir Klitschko and knocked him down three times. But Klitschko won every other round in the fight and cruised to a 114-111, 114-111, 114-111, unanimous decision over Peter. Peter wants a chance to avenge that loss. He, he's a much improved fighter. He didn't have upper body movement, placement of his punches, anything like he did tonight. He's much, much more improved. And whether his next fight is with Vitaly Klitschko, Vladimir, whoever, he is a serious threat with that kind of punching power. About 10 years ago, there was a Nigerian fighter named Ike Ibeabuchi who was seen by many as the uncrowned king of the division. He wound up going to jail. Sam Peter ultimately took his place and got the job done. Now and let's go to Victor Paris with the official particulars on the decision. After two minutes, 56 seconds. Después de dos minutos, 56 segundos. Referee Lupe Garcia stopped the fight for a technical knockout as the winner, como ganador por knockout técnico, Samuel de Nigeria Nightmare Peter. Copy box numbers in the fight. Peter with uh, a 12 punch edge and landed punches. He threw 12 more as well. Power shots made the difference in the fight. Sam Peter landed 21 more, threw 28 more, landed at a higher percentage. Put together the package in round six that closed the fight. And now let's go to Max Kellerman in the ring with the winner. Congratulations, Sam, on a spectacular stoppage win. What message did you just send? I'm the student heavyweight champion of the world. Who next? Well, let's talk about who's next. The only clamor to see Vitaly Klitschko in you is in a sanctioning body. Tomorrow. I'm, I'm ready tomorrow. The rest of the world wants to see you and Vladimir sorted out I'm to see who tomorrow. the heavyweight champion of the world is. I'm the best heavyweight champion of the world. I'm having WPC with me. I'm undefeated champion. Undisputed champion. I want who next. Okay, Vladimir beat you the first time, though you did knock him down three times. What do you have to say about a rematch with Vladimir Klitschko? We knock him out. We knock him out. We well, 21st place. We want Vladimir. I want to thank the state governor of Aquarium said, the excellency, Goswin Akpabio. He's the one that's sponsored me for the camp. 
the best governor ever I've seen. Love boxing. He loved boxing and he proved me very well. I have this opportunity to Sam, say hi to my president. Sa Sa Sam, what did you learn in your fights with Vladimir and with James Tony? I'm saying the truth. James Tony is the best boxer. I beat James Tony twice. I can beat any boxer in the world. I see give credit to James Tony. He's the best. Again, I want to ask, I understand there's a uh, sanctioning body silliness in terms of fighting Vitaly Klitschko. Vladimir is the recognized number one guy. You two, if you fought, the winner would be recognized for the first time since Lennox Lewis was champion as the heavyweight champion of the world. Will you fight Vladimir Klitschko next if you can? All of them, they're going down. They're going down. We don't care how they come. Congratulations, Sam. Thank you. Glory be to Almighty God. Thank you. Jim. I didn't understand the answer. I'm not sure what he said about whether he would fight Vladimir Klitschko next. The fact is, Don King was standing next to him.